Hi, I'm Kate O'Hare from Pathios.com. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Hi, yes, I have. How are you? Yes. I, I work for the uh, Catholic Channel, so I okay. think we have something in common. Uh, Catholicism? I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. How are you? Good to I'm meet you. I'm good. Mm. I hear this movie was bouncing around in your head for a while, so what made it finally pop out? Uh, I read this first, the, the original script about eight years ago, and um, I couldn't get it out of my head. It was just this beautiful, compelling story about a couple working through their grief and finding hope on the other side of it. And that's a theme that I always love and always love to explore. I love to see broken people kind of, kind of not unbreak themselves, but get some splints and, and, uh, <laughs> and have some healing, right? Cause like life isn't about, um, you know, life isn't about changing 180 degrees. Life is about small change. And that small change over the course of a life adds up to a lot. And that's what this movie was for me. It's like watching a couple work it out, find hope, stay together. That was a very compelling message for me. So I couldn't get the script out of my head. And then um, after Hidden Figures, I was trying to figure out what to do next. And you know, there was all the pressure of, oh, it's got to be Hidden Figures, um, which is impossible. Like Hidden, hidden Figures, figures is, too, the legend continues. Yeah, it's impossible. So I just went back to my roots, what I love to do. What changed about the script, if anything, over eight years? Because that's all part of this sort of process that when you finally get to making a movie, you might be in a different place than when you started. Well, when I started eight years ago reading the script, um, Melissa McCarthy's character was actually Chris O'Dowd's character. Ah, yeah, so well, that's a big change. It, that's a big change. There was a man, uh, Jack, who held, stayed home and held the fort down and stayed strong while his wife took a time out to go on a mental health um, break to try to figure out her life, right? Um, that's what the original script was. And then at reading it four years ago, I said, you know what, that's not, that's, that's not, that's not reality. Like, you know, my mom was a single mom. My wife of 25 years is the strongest person I know. Mm -hmm. My daughter's way stronger, way healthier than me um, <laughs> in, all, in all ways. And I find that women are like the glue and the spine of society. And once I, sw I, so I swapped the roles and, and I said, okay, the woman's going to be the one holding down the fort, staying strong, barreling through traditionally what we consider masculine archetypes. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the, the man was going to kind of take a time out and, and figure out how to move forward at a facility. Um, so the moment I switched those, it made sense to me. Like it, it made sense to me and the script completely changed and we didn't have to change much at all. Just literally copy and paste and switch the die, the, the character. Wow. Just, and we were like, holy cow, it works just as it is. And we had to change a couple little things, but it worked just the way it was. Well, also when a tragedy like that happens to people, you never quite know how you're going to react. So you might, nobody might react in, in the stereotypical way. Yeah, I mean, there's no real, there's no real way to process grief. There's no one way to process grief, especially this kind of grief. Yeah, there's just no right answer, and the only right answer is that you are trying to process it, right? That's the yeah. only right answer. Um, and in the in the movie, Melissa McCarthy's character is actually not trying to process it, uh, until she gets pecked by a bird, and the bird, the bird kind of pecks at her until she stops, until she stops and says, "Okay, I got to deal with this bird." And then she goes and deals with the bird and then she deals with her life. So, and Chris, Chris's path is completely different. Chris takes a different approach. On one level, you could think the bird is just a starling being a star starling, you know, being territorial, doing its thing. But, you know, if you want to have a, a, fan, a more supernatural turn of mind, you might think that the starling was sent to peck her until she dealt with her issues. How do, where do you fall on that, uh, on that question? Well, um, you know, God sends things our way all the time. He sends us messages. He sends us people. He sends us events. He sends us, I'm sure he sends us animals like to, to help us and to guide us and to peck us and to keep us, um, keep us moving forward. I mean, I, I know people that are very, very connected to their animals and, and um, you know, having a bird uh, with wings be the angel on her shoulder that wakes mm -hmm. her up is like, is like a beautiful metaphor, right? Whether the bird actually was an angel or just a bird is irrelevant. 
like that bird showed up and changed her life. So I fall kind of in the middle, you know, um, but I do believe things are sent. This is not quite an indie film. It's got a pretty big cast, but it's a small film. It's a simple film. Mm -hmm. What sort of a space has services like Netflix made for this kind of a film that might have had a difficult time theatrically, but it's not quite, you know, a cable TV movie or a network TV movie. What, what is opportunity as these services offer? Well, Netflix, ha Netflix has, I believe, over 200 million viewers, subscribers, right? So they have an audience for this film. Of the 200 million people, they have a large swath of people that want this kind of movie and a large swath of people that want all kinds of different movies. So mm -hmm. they're in a beautiful position to be able to make all kinds of different movies for all kinds of different people, which I think is a, is a huge blessing. So they are kind of saving indie film, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's, a, there's an audience for indie film and they have Netflix and Netflix wants to be able to show them stuff. So Netflix and, and the streaming phenomenon has really revamped the independent film market. And there's just so many opportunities now for people who make films to have a place to show them. Well, as any indie film maker will tell you, distribution is the devil that they have to deal with. And it's mm -hmm. always the, the thorniest part of the process. Yes, absolutely. Used to, be, used to be you'd make a movie and there were seven people, seven distributors that could distribute it. And you'd go around town peddling, 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 and you 90% of them never found homes. You letting all your St. Vincent fans know that they have a little bit of a reunion here? Uh, I don't have any kind of social media. Um, oh, no. So I don't know how to let any fans know we'll anything. Have to do I, it I, for you. I probably don't have any fans, so I don't really, you'll have, to, <laughs> you'll have to tell the people you think are my fans to watch the Starling. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't believe in social media. There's also like a whole space of films about people of faith or about issues to do with faith that don't necessarily have to fall into the faith-based movie realm. And I think this one kind of slots in there nicely. It's about small f faith. Is that how yeah. you saw it? Yeah, I, I never saw it as a film about faith other than we all have faith, all, all of us making it have faith. So it's all through that lens. Like mm -hmm. you just can't, you can't avoid that lens. I can't avoid my sensibility. Neither can Melissa or Chris or my wife, Kim. We can't avoid the sensibility, just, just who we are. Um, but I'm not overtly ever trying to preach. I'm not overtly ever trying to be heavy handed with, with faith. I think I respect everyone's faith. I think it's important. I think it's part of what's wrong with the world is this lack of respect for people, other people's faith and beliefs. Um, so I'm never trying to do that. It just kind of happens. It just kind of happens in a natural way. It's usually in the material. It's like, what is a Catholic film? I think it's a film made by a Catholic. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. What's next? Uh, I don't know what's next. I've been doing a lot of writing. I'm writing, um, I'm writing an animated movie for DreamWorks called Cuckoo. Uh, more birds more birds which is with um trevor noah and elizabeth banks with the producers and then How fun I'm, I'm writing um the 14th goldfish for netflix with my partners alessandra carloni and my wife kim and then um uh i'm doing uh, hopefully maybe doing huck which is another netflix movie with melissa mccarthy and jacob tremblay and just a bunch of stuff i do a lot of writing so who knows i don't know the answer is i don't know I think you'll figure it out along the way. And it might continue to have an animal in it. Yeah, why not? It might. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate it. Thanks, Kate. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.